Um, yeah, welcome everyone. Um, first of all, thank you all, thank you all for joining. And um, today we'll talk about Hilt. Um, this is like the new toy. Um, I, I call it toy because it's well, it's kind of production ready, but uh, you should use it uh, with cautionous. Um, so, um, and we will discuss lots of different other topics, but um, please um, think about all this presentation as a, I would say, um, as an introduction to something new that is present on, uh, on Android ecosystem. So, what is Hilt? And uh, well, yeah, Hilt is <laughs> Hilt is this object. So thank you very much. This is all. Um, yeah, generally, like what we know, um, that uh, Hilt is like the special name that describes uh, the special handler for the knife or a dagger, uh, which makes uh, a dagger easier to handle and uh, easier to use. Because without it, you probably will uh, will hurt yourself. Uh, so generally, Hilt, according to the documentation, it is like standard way for now to use Dagger in Android application because um, Dagger was uh, used, um, well, was actually designed not for Android, but it's mostly used by Android. Uh, and uh, like, what is the goal of Hilt is to simplify Dagger, first of all, for Android apps, create uh, some standards that Android has, uh, because Dagger can be used for um, any application, uh, any like Java-based application or Kotlin-based application. So it actually like uh, Hilt is more designed for Android specifically, and it provides an easy way to reuse different components, use different models, uh, modules, and uh, create different bindings for different build types. Uh, but first of all, for those who don't know what is Dagger, what is dependency injection, as we can see here, let's deep dive into some of the basics. So what is dependency injection itself? Um, dependency injection is a technique, uh, actually, um, it's not kind of like a pattern or a standard or whatever. This is just a technique when some object receives other object that it depends on. And uh, in software engineering, it is considered as a design pattern. It is not part of a um, gang of four, uh, 24 patterns, patterns but uh, it, it is an extension to um, design patterns uh, which we have. And there are like four main entities in dependency injection. First of all, it is a client. This is the object that actually receives um, dependencies. So for example, car is dependent on wheels. Uh, so car is a client. Wheels are services because they kind of provide the service for the car to move. And injector, this is the one that provides those dependencies. So for example, if you are talking about some factory that produces cars, um, the, the special mechanism that actually inserts wheels into the uh, into the car uh, itself is the injector and the process of those so while the factory is working it is the injection and uh, usually injection is the code or the thread or dependency graph or whatever that actually kind of is providing those dependencies this is the place where dependencies live how they are constructed etc etc and uh, so, so these are four main parts of uh, dependency injection as a pattern. And uh, when we will go to boring UML, you can see all of this here. So we have the injector, the one who is injecting, and we have the client that needs some, some of the parts. And uh, so actually injector creates two of those and injects services into the client. And after that, client can uh, use them. So if you go to the sequence diagram, we have the injector that creates a service, creates a service, then inject those both, and then client starts working. Uh, so usually when you create a client, for example, when the client can, um, for example, we have a situation when client needs um, another, it uh, needs to be a dependency for something else, then the client becomes a service. And in such case, we having the dependency graph. So for example, we have here another client and in such case, uh, you can see here new. So it's kind of the injector is creating a new client and injecting those both services. And if you have client two here, we will see another line like new and eject SA1, SAB1, uh, SB1, and C1, for example, for client. So having this in mind, uh, let's discuss self. Um, so we have, like, we know the diagram, we have injector client services. And with that being said, 
do we really need any dependency injection um, solution for that? So um, if you like talk here for a couple of minutes, do you know any uh, basic steps to have the dependency injection um, implemented in your code without using coin, without using Dogger, without using anything else? So just using the programming language, for example, Java, how would you implement the dependency injection? So like, what do you think is already out of the box in Java or Kotlin or whatever else programming language? Um, any ideas, comments? Using creational patterns like factories, abstract factory and so on. Yeah, good. Thank you, Artem. Thank you for joining. <laughs> um, yeah. Factory, this is, uh, this is the first one. And actually, like, for those who have used Dogger, you know that there is like um, component annotation that factory that actually um, is creating a component that has different dependencies. Um, okay, uh, what do you think about using just a constructor? So we have a constructor uh, which receives an object in it as a parameter. Is it a dependency injection or not? or a lot more cards than your opponent, right? Yes, exactly. So if you add a whole some... Sorry? I think that it can, it depends uh, on where this object is created, whether it, it is created uh, in another class or outside of it. Yeah, yeah, so like uh, we have class A that receives uh, object B, and uh, um, it receives it in a constructor. And probably this object B has to be created somewhere else because it is received in a constructor. So class A is not constructing all, uh, object B on itself. So it's kind of needs object B as a dependency. And uh, it, like, it thinks, class A actually thinks and uh, acts as it will receive object B at some point in the future. So like we probably don't care so much about it. So for example, if we uh, are implementing any SDK or something like that, and we're implementing SDK that will receive, uh, for example, let's say we, we're implementing some drawing SDK, and we need to receive and, um, a color as an object to draw a line. So we kind of specify a contract that like we don't care. Um, we do not construct color on our own. We just draw a line and we, we behave like we will receive the color from the outside in our constructor. Otherwise, our object can be used. So our method to draw a line will not be, uh, will not be used or our uh, class um, drawer will not be used uh, without a color. So that color should be, um, you, uh, should be inserted somewhere from the outside. And the same is also true for just simple setters. So without using just any uh, any frameworks like dependency injection at its basics is just using setters or constructors. So every time when you have an, uh, when you have a class that creates objects on its own that it should not depend on, um, in such case, uh, we can say that we have anti-pattern here because um, our dependencies are constructed inside of class and it makes um, our class less testable and less extendable because every time we have an issue in a dependent class and it's constructed in our um, in our main class, we need to we need to update uh, that dependent class, which results in um, violating single responsibility because our class A is not longer uh, doesn't have one uh, one reason to change because right now we have to change another class which has another reason to change, so we kind of violating just solid principles. Um, with that being said, we can have like use, we can use just constructors and setters. But usually, using constructors and setters um, actually um, makes our code our code much more difficult. And because of that, um, we will have a lot of different setters, big constructors, and um, still we need some object to create um, to create a dependency for us which means that probably at some point in the future, we will violate um, single responsibility pattern, a uh, single responsibility principle for, uh, for that class that is creating dependencies for others. So with that being said, 
uh, all of the developers of different dependency injection frameworks have come to conclusion that probably we will need some entity that will manage dependencies for us. So we will have another single responsible uh, component that will manage dependencies. So for now, we have all of the, our objects working on its own, doing the job. And at the same point, we have a separate object that will manage dependencies. So we don't care about how dependencies will be managed because we know that, um, that our dependencies will be inserted at some point in the future. And this is basically for what Dagger was created. And Dagger initially was the um, implementation of um, Square Company, which later was bought by Google, and uh, Google then implemented Dagger too. And the main difference for those who don't know, um, difference between Dagger and Dagger too is uh, in the um, in the dependencies uh, providing uh, for for the components. So Dagger was used in the runtime, uh, was providing dependencies in the right time runtime, while Dagger two is uh, compile time. And with that being said, it's much easier for now for all the developers to understand that some dependency is missing because otherwise, with Dagger first version, you had to run the application and then receive the dependency at some point in the future and guess that. Uh, okay, this dependency was missing because you probably failed with some configurations. So um, by its own, Dagger is a realization of dependency injection pattern. And uh, well, I'll call it realization of the framework because, well, there are different realization and uh, different implementations, and it is considered as a framework uh, to uh, simplify the declaration and provisioning of uh, dependencies. And like before, there are a lot of Annotations, but the main four that you need, and probably we will, uh, we'll, like, and they are also used in Hilt, um, are this one. The component is not used so much in Hilt, but let's go uh, from top to bottom. So, like, I just refresh some of the thoughts. So, first of all, inject is, is the annotation. So, all of these annotations um, do something with Dagger, and inject just declares that th that this field should be injected. Usually, inject can be used uh, in a constructor. In such case, it declares that all fields inside that constructor should be injected. So um, our dependency management system should take those uh, dependencies somewhere and inject in that constructor. So basically, uh, dependency management system is calling a constructor after it's calling a constructor of the dependent object and the second dependent object and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So some of those objects can be already created. Some of them has to be created. But in this case, um, it's kind of doing a lot of uh, our job instead of us. So it's just like calling the new uh, and that's it. Uh, provides and binds, uh, like I noted them in one line because basically there are different ways to declare uh, how object can be constructor. So with provides, you actually have to specify the real call to a constructor, you can create some specific configurations and um, and uh, different logic during creation of the object. So kind of declaring and implementing the way that uh, Dagger has to call your constructor. So every time when object A is requested, uh, dependency management system calls this part of the code and construct it the way that you have uh, declared. And the binds is actually like a simplified way that you say, okay, every time we need this interface, call, uh, create this object, okay? And if that object uh, that should be created has a declared uh, constructor, uh, it will be called. So every time you need uh, I repository and you say that binds I repository to uh, my repository. So every time you will inject I repository, I, re I repository in every class, uh, my repository constructor will be called. The open question for those who know Dagger is just to refresh your mind, how do you think uh, if we have two different constructors in my repository and we use binds, the first question, will it work? The second one, which constructor will be called if it works? With using binds annotation. Could you please repeat the question? So we have uh, 
we have declared the provisioning of uh, of an object with using binds annotation. So let me um, let me go for example um, here. So uh, so let's say we have this uh, this thing. So we have binds, and every time we need an I application repository, we will call application repository constructor, and in such case, we will receive the dependency. What if here we will have not this default constructor, but let's say another one constructor here. Let's say we'll have another one constructor here in some object A. Which one will be called? This one or this one? Or we will receive some issues, compiled issues, etc. So that's the question. How binds works actually? Uh, I think you can have just one inject constructor, so with inject annotation, and it will be called. Yes. So uh, yeah, the proper answer is that if I have in this case another constructor, so inject is here, so uh, our system will call this one. Otherwise, we can like put inject here, and in such case, object A will be created. And this constructor will then be called, and actually this one will be called. And it will have an application repository with uh, this constructor called and object A, if it has a proper uh, configuration, will be a constructor and uh, will be injected in uh, uh, in the constructor. And in such case, we'll have application repository with a object constructed for it. Uh, sorry, <laughs> some Mars. Um, Okay, uh, module is actually is basically the entry point for containers to grab dependencies. So all of these provide binds and etc. You have to put in some module. Uh, for example, a repository module. And in this repository module, uh, I mentioned here that it should follow single responsibility. Why it should follow? Because for the maintainability and readability purposes, if you will have all module and it will have all of the dependencies, it becomes harder at some point in the future to uh, separate uh, separate your uh, system to different components. And uh, for example, if um, Fragment needs only uh, user's repository, but you have a module that has user's repository, connectivity manager, and um, I don't know, like uh, dependency manager for some third party dependencies, um, like it might be not useful so much. So you probably need some just repository module, which will help all the repositories, or maybe you just need users repository module uh, or something like that. Uh, so module should um, should contain all of these provides and binds. And the fourth and the last basic and required uh, documentation that you should know and you should care about is component. So it's actually the container for injectors to do some dependencies. Um, it can contain different modules uh, and usually it usually should also follow some responsibility and be a kind of reflection of your uh, of your components of your uh, let's say packages or whatever um, in, in your in, in your source code so for example if you have um, user profile so probably you'll need user profile component that will uh, contain different modules and will um, export let's say export only those um, dependencies that user profile um, fragment should care about. So like it will, uh, it will show user repository to retrieve the current user. It will show, um, it will have version module, which will provide the application version and etc. It can uh, have a feedback module, which will have some dependencies for, for example, a feedback page on the user profile or, or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, this is like generally what is Dagger, okay? Okay, my cat just turned on the piano and started playing. Um, so, Dagger is the dependency injection pattern. Probably a lot of you have used it. If you haven't, uh, you can try, but if you're working only on Android applications and you haven't worked with Dagger, you can go straight forward to Hilt in case you think that Dagger is really complicated. So, let's go to Hilt basics. Um, some new annotations here uh, in Hilt. First of all, Hilt Android app um, is the, it actually like 
describes to, this, uh, to the system that, that this Android application will use Hilt and it actually creates an application component and singleton component. I will talk about component a little bit later. Android Entry Point, it's, um, it's a specific intention that you should annotate each of your Android specific classes like activity, fragment, broadcast receivers, um, views, um, probably that, that, that's all for now. Uh, uh, so every Android Entry Point describes to Hilt, actually like Hilt is, is built on top of Dagger for you to be known. So, every, so in case you use Hilt, you can always use Dagger. So you, you don't have to kind of have different dependencies or so. Uh, so you can use everything that Dagger already provides, but you can use Hilt. So um, with Android entry point, you can just specify that this particular Android component like activity should receive uh, injections and should receive dependencies from dependency graph created by Dagger and created by Hilt. Install in is a specific annotation that you describe in a module that uh, this module should live in this component. So basically, uh, with these three annotations at this point, I want to emphasize that what you have to understand that Hilt actually removes components, kind of term a component, and this annotation component uh, from, from your code base. So you don't have to think about activity component, app component, for component, or whatever. You just have, uh, you have some predefined components. I will show them later to you. And uh, you just specify in which component this module should live. So for example, if you want a um, repository module to be available throughout the app, you specify in install in application component with the newest version of Hilt, you, uh, there is no application component, there is only singleton component. Uh, so you just specify in which component this module will live and all of its dependencies will live. Um, you can say install in fragment component, which means that this module will live for all fragments and so on. And also there are some scopes uh, for these uh, containers. Um, I will describe it a little bit later, but if you even tell install in fragment component, this doesn't mean that this, that this particular dependency will live only on the fragment level of scope. So you just have to define some specific dependency that should be available during fragment lifecycle or activity lifecycle. Another scope that you probably already know from Dagger is singleton. So uh, at singleton is actually the, um, the one that's also used in Hilt. Uh, there are some uh, predefined qualifiers which are really useful because usually uh, in Android you need some classes which probably are not UI classes but for some reason you need a context um, to retrieve some um, reachability manager or you need to retrieve package manager or whatever you need to provide some context and with that being said you have to propagate context from, from the very top of your UI like very down to the class that actually needs a package manager. Usually it's not a good design to have this, but sometimes you probably need this. And usually you have to support some legacy code or this is the application that is designed that way and it has to behave this way. Uh, with this annotation, you can define on the very low level that application context should be inserted out there without calling uh, application.getInstance.getApplicationContext uh, or so. So it will be injected and it lives as long as the application lives. The same is with activity context. So activity context lives as long as the activity lives, etc. Uh, I'll finish with this annotation and then probably you will have some questions. Uh, so uh, we can discuss them. Entry point um, is a specific annotation that Hilt has created from the very beginning uh, to support classes that are not supported directly. For example, content provider uh, is not supported for now. And this is the Android component, which has Android lifecycle. Uh, services is another entry point that is not supported directly uh, by Hilt. So you can create some of your custom entry points and then receive dependencies from entry points. Uh, I won't stop a lot on this one um, during this presentation because all this information you can read uh, in more details on the official uh, website for Hilt, uh, which is like uh, dagger.dev slash Hilt. So you can read more information out there. 
view model inject is another notation just for view models from the architecture components and hilton ray test is specific notation for tests and it is used only for instrumented tests so we don't need any hilt annotations for um, just unit tests except like uh, you need uh, but you, you're writing unit tests that have some dependencies. In such case, yeah, you probably will need this Hilton Droid test in order to uh, have injections. Um, go ahead with any questions you have so far with these annotations. There are much more. There is like optional inject, uh, bind optional, whatever something. Um, there is generate root uh, classes and etc. So like there are more annotations, but these are the basics that you should know, and these are enough for you to kick off and start. Uh, using kill. Um, go ahead with questions. So okay. I, I have a question. Uh, can application use hilt without modules and installing uh, just you mark all your activities fragments with Android entry point and everything like works <laughs> like a charm? Uh, yes, but in such case you are not receiving any dependencies. So um, what, will work, what will work with this case if you have an uh, activity which depends on the fragment, okay? And uh, with, that, with, with that case, you have Android entry point on activity, you have Android entry point on the fragment, which does not have any dependencies let's say so it's just like empty fragment without any dependencies uh i don't i cannot like create a real example but let's think about it and uh you have inject annotation with this fragment in activity in such case it will work because well you don't have any custom dependencies like database or managers or uh, use cases or whatever so uh, like a charm in, in uh, you can inject V models into activity and you can inject what you, you want, like use case into V model inject constructor. So it could work, but some not simple cases may not work. Yeah, so like if you go, for example, to simple example, so if I have, let's call this one, I have view model. If I will eliminate this repository from here, Okay, let's say I'm not using repository. I'm, I'm creating it here inside. Okay, so kind of this is my very first step of transitioning from no DI to Hilt. And uh, in uh, main activity, uh, sorry, in fragment here, I have this uh, construction. So, and well, let's say I don't have it, it here as well. So I have some view model which does something. I have a fragment which does something. And I have view model, which does something that has no dependencies. And um, let's say in my activity, here I have also um, a fragment like this. So in such case, I don't need any module. So I have just Android entry point. I have Hilt Android application. Um, I have... Um, I have fragment which needs view model which is created like this. In such case, yes, like it will work because I don't need any uh, specific dependencies. It will work without using module annotation at all, without install in and etc. So this is kind of a tricky part here, but probably you will need some to inject some custom objects at some point. Um, Thank you for the question. Uh, any other questions at this point? Okay, let's go ahead. So, um, component love time. So, as I said previously, there are uh, multiple components that are predefined for uh, for using an Android application. And, um, well, usually, Dagger is used in a way that you probably you probably need something that will live throughout the, uh, the whole application lifecycle. You need something that will live through the activity lifecycle, fragment lifecycle, and, uh, and like other life cycles. Oh, okay, so, so they added service component in recent versions. Um, 
So, so recently we had uh, application component and singleton component, but at some point Hill developers understood that, okay, we don't need both of them because they all have the same life cycle. So anything that is coped with a singleton annotation will live from the application on create till the application on destroy. So with that being said, keep in mind that all of your singletons will live throughout the application and will drain your memory. So work with it carefully uh, if you don't need like anything like that. Good, good, uh, good singleton component that you probably might need might be some network utilities um, that you probably will need some, I don't know, like network manager that will always check for internet connectivity throughout the app. So probably you need one of these objects uh, maybe some um, application level error handling um, that will show um, you know, other dialogues throughout the app. should probably be a singleton because it needs to live throughout the application uh, lifecycle. Uh, there are two activity retain component and activity component. So it is like on create and on destroy. And it like from the first point, it sounds like it's weird. Why do we have different components? Uh, I have a question for you. Uh, what do you think? What is the difference between those? I will explain it to you uh, if you don't know, but maybe you have some ideas. Okay. Um, so uh, activity retained component is basically the life cycle uh, that handles configuration changes. So your object will live uh, even when user rotate the screen or you, for example, change the localization and you have to change the configuration of your application. In such case, um, your object will keep on living even though, even though the activity is destroyed. So this is kind of the specific uh, scope for some objects. And activity component is the scope when you will change your configuration, the object will be destroyed. So this is just like plain activity uh, life cycle. Fragment component is from unattached to undestroy. For those who didn't know, um, um, undetached is, um, is called after the undestroy. So, um, but, so all the objects are removed and then fragment is detached. Um, so this will be from unattached to undestroy. So even before onCreate, our fragment will already have the, uh, all the uh, object it is uh, it needs to use and all the objects called fragment um, There is view component and uh, view with fragment component basically This is kind of the fragment which lives inside the view. So whenever view is removed um, It doesn't matter if you have a fragment uh, Fragment scope dependency it will be removed as soon as the viewer is removed even though fragment will live for some reason And service component is as well living until the service on destroy any questions so far at this point? So these are all pre-created components for you. And, every, and if we'll take a look at this install in, you should specify one of these components or your custom components, which can also be created in Hill. Any questions? If no questions, let's go ahead. Um, scope, so as I mentioned previously, there are some scopes and there are some predefined components. So like from, from the junior perspective, <laughs> looks like that if we will define that this object should uh, have the fragment component lifecycle and we inject um, user manager in the fragment, it should live as long as fragment lives. But actually fragment component default bindings means that it will live during the application lifecycle as well. So uh, you have to specify which exact object will live during fragment lifecycle. What does it mean? Uh, so it doesn't mean that like if fragment is destroyed, the object still lives. It means that if you have two different fragments which use the same dependency, so we have user, uh, users uh, list and user profile and both need user repository and you have user repository installed in fragment component. The one instance of user repository will live in fragment in uh, users uh, view, in users list and user profile. But if you will scope it, 
two. So it, it kind of be reused between both of these uh, fragments. But if you will scope it to the specific fragment, to, to scope it with a um, fragment scoped, it means that new user repository will be created for each fragment and will be destroyed after a fragment is destroyed. Did you get it? So, once again, let's take, let's talk about um, service components. So we have two different services which use uh, network manager uh, on the service component level. And we don't have service scoped on it. So we will have one network manager which will be reused between two different services. So we have one instance for both of them. And, uh, and if one service is destroyed, other one leaves, the network manager will still leave. But if you will have service scoped, and uh, we'll have two different instances of network manager for each service. Sometimes it is useful uh, if you know that your user repository will be used only by one fragment and you need it to live as long as fragment lives and then be destroyed and flush the memory, um, you have to use uh, fragment scope. In such case, you will improve the performance of your application. So these are the main parts of Hilt that you should probably know because Hilt is simple, it's easy to use, and we will go through some example. I will. I, I have posted uh, examples, uh, screenshots from example here. Um, I will also attach the very simple demo project to our um, to our um, space on conference. But uh, let's go through the code itself. So like this is a very simple app. I also um, attached the more complex, um, more complex project from GitHub that uses Hilt on different levels. It uses different architecture components. It has very good example of production-like uh, application that uses Hilt. But if you go to very simple steps, first thing you need is to uh, declare the, uh, the Hilt uh, Gradle plugin. The one specific thing about, about Hilt is that uh, if you go to Dagger to Dagger GitHub, so if you go to GitHub, Google Dagger releases, uh, you can see that there is no alpha here. So there is only like version of Dagger, but starting 228, they introduced Hilt, and Hilt is still alpha. So we have to pay attention to this. Uh, so anytime you want to use Hilt in your app, you have to uh, have this suffix um, dash alpha. Otherwise, you will have just plain Dagger without Hilt. And uh, so this this is true for all versions until Hilt, <coughs> sorry, until Hilt is alpha. So the first thing is that you uh, declare this um, Redel plugin, and of course the very the very second step is that you have to uh, specify it here, uh, apply plugin. Then uh, then you like go through all of the dependencies. Here I put all the dependencies for Java and Kotlin, but you can see that for example for um, and for uh, annotation processing for Java, you use this one. For Kotlin, you use this one. Just like use different uh, different uh, keyword here. The same happens for Android implementations. So it's as like kept Android test, Android test implementation. The same is for kept tests and just uh, for um, um, for Hill compiler that is used for view model. Um, so if you use Java, you don't need like all of this. If you use both of them, um, you can uh, you can easily add dependencies for this and this. Um, so also here I mentioned the same one. So I like I usually um, place this in a, a project I work on, so people are aware that we need to use uh, dash alpha in our versioning. Um, this is all for just adding the dependencies for Hilt, and then if you go like straight to the code, if we'll take a look at uh, how it looked before. So um, if you go um, yeah, to this one, so this is kind of the 
application uh, application setup. And uh, if you will take a look, I'm sure that I have this. I don't have this example here, but um, I do not remember. Okay, I will. I will um, you probably can find it um, on the internet, or those who work with Dagger, you know that you have to create component dot factory. You have to call uh, Dagger uh, up component dot create and specify the context and etc. In order to create an application component. With Hilt, you just need this annotation over here in place. Um, so like it, it looks just like simple as, as it is. With that being said, our application uh, now is constructed uh, for using Hilt. And after that, you can start uh, adding different Hilt annotations for you to use. So in main activity, um, as mentioned, use Android entry point and in example that activity is using some repository over here. And uh, if Hilt knows how to grab I application repository. It will inject it here without any component creation, without any extra boilerplate code that you probably will use on Dagger. So it will just find it in some dependency graph. For this, we need to create a module over here and specify, um, specify your dependencies. In case you use, um, uh, in case you use uh, provide annotations, you will need to write an object which will have some um, provide another dependency and then see here you can like so and here here you can specify like this so for example we need this dependency of a um, so we have a different module which uh, will work in a fragment component in such case, we will have, as I mentioned previously, we will have object A for different uh, fragments. But if you want this to be scoped just to a specific fragment, we just write fragment scope. And this object will be created for each fragment during its life cycle from on attach till on destroy. It will live in that particular fragment. Um, so this is kind of as easy as it is um, for, for, for this one. Of course, you cannot have multiple, uh, you can have provides and binds in, um, in one um, instance here. So I usually like to write um, like provided module. In such case, you know that this one is provided, this one is binded. You can also like have single tone module or whatever. This is just a naming for you. Um, so you specify these dependencies over here how to retrieve them and in such case uh, as it was mentioned we have the i application repository that knows how to create application repository and if you go to this class it is as simple as it is um, here we can use application context and in such case context will be uh it will be provided for us uh, and we don't need to uh, write anything specific over here or create another method for example um, that that will say um, so reason like before we'd have to have something like this in order to uh, be injected and uh, specify like which actual context we need we don't we don't even know which context we will have here is it duty context is it application context we don't know so uh, in such case um, this one is simplified for us and we can only have it here and use context in our application repository, which like for me is, is looking very simplified in such case. Um, so um, if, if, this, if this uh, annotation is a, uh, the entered context will be injected automatically, yes? Yes. Um, second. Yeah, so if you it will be injected I, automatically, or you can specify the duty context. And if you want to get context in another, for example, another module? Uh, another another uh, object module? Sorry. Uh, in another module of our um, project. Uh, well, the, the cool thing is that, for example, you can, you can have it here. So in such case, 
application context will be injected to our activity together with this application repository. Or if you need it in a module, you can specify it here. So in such case, you can rewrite this one to be um, to be like this. Um, you can have it like this and remove it from here. Mm, okay. Okay, we need you need it here, but I mean remove this annotation. Uh, is there any way when we need injected repository in activity class? Why do we need to inject repository into activity? In the terms of uh, learning. <laughs> yeah. But, but, but sometimes there are different projects when you will probably, well, here, as you can see, I just like logging it. Uh. So, like I'm not using it, it instances, so I just wanted to like for learning purposes say that you can inject anything here if you want to. Uh, okay. Yeah. So generally, um, well, let's say you can have it like this. So answering your very first question, this one will work without module. Because many fragment will be constructed for you and injected into activity. And in such case, main fragment has view model. So like going into the proper way, probably like the normal application should look something like this. So you have the main view model that has view model inject and receives application repository. Well, actually here it should be I application repository. For the terms of uh, terms of sake, and let's say that this one should have fun get app id int and should have um, fun add app ink, and it should be override. So, for the sake of proper object oriented design, you probably will. Uh, you probably will have all of this constructed if you're going to live coding. Uh, let's say we need we'll have our app, something like this. So we have a module that has application repository properly binded and we tell we told um, the dependency management uh, graph how to construct it. We go, uh, we go to my application repository which use context here for some reason, okay? doesn't matter. And um, later this I application repository is injected in main view model using view model inject annotation, all done for us. And we have our fragment, which uses this construction by uh, view models, and it will receive main view model from Hilt. And later this fragment is injected into our main activity without any harm, without any um, com complications. And uh, here, um, our fragment is properly injected and its code is being executed. And we have data binding, which is also another uh, standard. And we have everything working like a shard. Can you press mic icon? Will it work? <laughs> I don't believe it. <laughs> mic icon? Yeah. Yeah, let's try it. <laughs> because it looks like a magic for me. The only thing why it can fail is uh, because of this one, but I'm not sure it, it should work. Mm -hmm. Oops. What's wrong? Okay, so it, it can be injected in the. Okay, we need the public constructor. Hmm. Okay, it's, it's already using. Um, Will it work? I'm curious. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't tried this. Hmm. 
Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, <laughs> I'm impressed. <laughs> uh, yeah, it looks really cool. So, yeah. Well, it builds. Let's try to run it. <laughs> so, we do some live coding. I like live coding. Okay. Thank you, Studio. Okay, it's starting. We have some time, so let's wait for it. Let's see it works. So while while it's running, um, let's proceed with another part: is tests. So with tests, you need to you need two things. Um, well, first of all, the testing philosophy. Uh, I have put it in a presentation, but the testing philosophy of Hilt is that you should test against real objects. Of course, sometimes it's not good enough to test against real objects, but if you have, for example, debug builds, you're probably not using real server or real database or whatever. So uh, Hilt usually uh, propagates using of the real object. And uh, with that being said, you probably should inject real repository over here and, uh, and use it all over the place and test against real repository because it is much closer to the real user scenarios. Because mocks at some point usually will deprecate, um, they will, will not cover all over um, all of the cases and so on and so forth. Um, he'll provide different, uh, different options for you to um, replace the, some implementations on the test. So there is a special notation, uh, which is uninstall modules. So you can have a testing module and you can have a real module. So for example, here we can, um, we can uninstall this module and we can, and we can later like uh, use some different class. So in such, in such case, application repository will be taken from some other place where you can uh, create a custom entry point here and inject it or some custom repository where you can create a, a, bind, a bind value and you can bind, uh, bind some uh, different uh, repository over here. But usually like the main SAM, the main feature is to, the main goal is to use the real uh, repositories, uh, real objects, sorry. So the first thing annotated with Hilt and Royal test, the second one is to ha you have to specify the rule. And the tricky point, so Hilt is alpha uh, and you have to have this rule always be the very first one. So um, here you have to write that order of it should be zero, okay? Uh, otherwise it can not work properly with, uh, with some activity rules or whatever. So it should be always the very, very first rule. You can uh, wrap rules in the rule chain and in such uh, case specify Hilt and Droid the rule as the first rule. And after that, in your test, you just call rule inject and it will inject your classes, uh, I mean, all of these dependencies into object you are testing. So in such case, I mean, your model will receive the repository injected. Otherwise, if you will call this one, it will fail because repository is not, it's not constructed yet for us. But in case we inject it, then we have the repository, the real repository in our new model. And then we can validate that this is not null and use it at some point. So for example, we need to validate object before creation, after creation or whatever, et cetera, et cetera. So this is kind of the, the small thing with uh, testing. And another tricky part of Hilt is uh, having this uh, custom uh, Hilt runner because uh, like Hilt test application is usually this default application which you have here. The tricky point starts when you have a custom application um, and uh, you, you're like, you don't need to use this. So Hilt this app is kind of a mock app uh, for your own, but imagine that 
in your application in OnCreate, you are doing some of the initializations, you probably need some custom application. And in such case, it has custom test application, uh, which is um, some my custom app. And here you have to specify your application class. Um, in such case, you can here use a uh, demo application build test or something like that. I don't remember the exact name, but um, you can like you can do it like this. I probably will need to take a look into uh, into other of my source codes, but in such case, uh, Hilt will call on create, on destroy, and all other parts of your real application, not the mocked application. So if you need to validate crash critics or whatever, you need to uh, have this custom application specified. Um, like even if I will run this test, probably it will fail um, because it will tell me that uh, I, need, I need to specify some custom, custom app. Let's, let's try it. I don't remember the exact name, how it should be. Hilton Android app, demo application, blah, blah, blah. So probably it's expecting some, some custom app over here. Uh, so yeah, um, this is kind of like the way, I, I'll, I can show you the real example afterwards if you if you'd like to. Um, and this Hilt, sorry, uh, this Hilt demo test runner has to be specified over here. I have a question to uh, Christina. Will this uh, presentation posted will be posted to YouTube or not? Um, yes. Uh, okay. Then I will, then I will not show you the real code. I will, <laughs> we can stop recording, and after that, I will show you if you would like to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And this one has to be specified over here as a test implementation runner. And it should be done, doesn't matter if you're using custom app or not using. So for running hill test, you have to have this one. Um, okay, let's go ahead to our app. Where is it? <laughs> I like Android Studio. Probably need to restart it. So we need to validate if it's actually working, yep. It's building, it's great, but if it's working. So I'll let it, let it run for one more time. And uh, yeah, let's go back to the presentation. Um, so yeah, generally all of the steps I have showed you. So this one, this one, um, so all of the code that I showed you is described over here. So for those people who will not, uh, who hasn't joined or you would like to look at it one more time, uh, so all the steps that we have discussed. Uh, some of the takeaways um, is that, so for now to summarize while it's running, um, Hilt is Android only. It supports uh, everything except content providers. In, in 229.1, it started supporting broadcast receivers. Um, Hilt is alpha, uh, so there is some strange issues. For example, I, uh, I faced issue with uh, Hilt and Jacoco uh, for coverage not being gathered. And there is an open issue for that, and there is a workaround for that. Um, so I will show you the workaround. Um, here, so in order to get the to get the coverage, so what is actually happening? Hilt is doing some bytecode transformations for us, and is actually creating Hilt main activity class um, underneath, and Jacoco cannot handle this for us uh, at this stage. And uh, there is an open issue on uh, Gradle, even on, the, on Google side with. Um, P3 priority, if I'm not mistaken, and S3 severity. So it's like, it will be fixed somewhere next year. Um, but probably this is also an issue with the 
project uh, I'm working on. But anyway, so in order to have your coverage gathered, you have to specify the class that you need uh, your class to extend of, to extend from. And here you need to specify like this. So in such case, coverage will be gathered. This is like the, you're kind of eliminating by code transformation during the coverage gathering. Um, and also you, um, you have to remove uh, this, uh, this thing from, from your build gradle because this one transforms all the classes and um, other stuff for coverage as well. So like if you remove this one, if you will stop using the plugin uh, all over the place, you should start getting coverage. Or maybe you can find another solution, but I started conversations on GitHub and they still have that issue with coverage for now. Uh, but this is like not a big deal. It's just like the matter of readability. So this is the first weak point uh, of Hill at current stage because it is alpha. Uh, it's easy to use and start as you have seen, um, especially if you don't know Dagger, you probably don't need to learn all of these features. Um, it has custom components and entry points and it has a good documentation over that on how to create custom components, how to use entry points, etc. but probably you will not use it um, and I recommend to use just plain old Dagger um, if you are familiar with it, instead of creating some custom solutions, some tricky ones, etc. Uh, testing has different philosophy, as I have mentioned, is that you probably need to use real objects for tests, and it has some better completion error descriptions. Usually, like, probably you are missing Hilt Android app annotation, or uh, Android entry point doesn't have class specified or etc. So it has like a little more better error description than Dagger for me personally. Uh, yeah, let's go to the app. So we have this app running right now and let's try to, okay, it's working. With, with all of this magic that Artem was impressed by. Um, so generally, if you go to view model, you just like get the next app, whatever. Um, so you don't have any extra um, complications over here. So with that simple setup, you can have some dependencies already in place. And yeah, fragment was injected and it's used gracefully by the activity. Um, yeah, so, and the last one, here's the, uh, here's the GitHub link. Uh, if I will uh, tap on it, you can go uh, to this uh, application. Well, it uses a lot of cool things uh, that you can read about, maybe prepare next, um, next presentation. Uh, I wanted to prepare a presentation regarding Timber. Uh, this is a login created by Jack, uh, by Jack Wharton. A very, very good, um, blogging solution and uh, library for, for people that don't like uh, creating custom and uh, strange loggings. So it's actually like, this is the example of using uh, Hilt in the MVVM um, application. So it, it has some, like it has Kotlin, coroutines, different stuff. So I really recommend you to look through the whole app, how it, uh, how it uses different components and uh, how it uses Hilt underneath with all of this view model inject, um, entry points, components, and etc. So generally that's it regarding the presentation. As I mentioned, this is the introduction to Hilt. Um, do you have any questions? Maybe you want to discuss something or you want me to try something? Cool.